Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, sorry it's taken so long since I made a video. I do various uh, servicing here at home for friends and family and occasionally for paying customers, but I don't always have something that's worth posting. Um, and given that I'm busy, I thought I would save it until I had something, uh, something kind of special on my bench. And I think I've got it here. This is a Waltham uh, 16S uh, Hunter Pocket Watch. It is an 1872 model. Uh, I bought this movement for 50 bucks on eBay. And uh, there's the movement there. You can see it's a three-quarter plate uh, movement. Uh, and it's engraved uh, American Watch Co. And this makes it a somewhat rare uh, movement. It is a 16 joule uh, model 1872 uh, 16S. Uh, there are about 10,000 of this uh, grade produced according to the American Pocket Watch database, which in my books for an American watch, mass produced watch, makes it at least somewhat rare. Uh, it came without a case, so a major challenge in this restoration is going to be uh, finding a case. In particular, you'll note that the stem here is built into the watch. So what I need to find is a 16S case uh, with a female stem that is uh, something that this stem can uh, insert into into the case. Uh, so that's going to be a bit of a challenge and uh, goodness knows how long it's going to take me to find uh, find a case like that. So this may not be a quick restoration. Uh, but I want to dig into it because I've been really excited about this watch coming. Uh, I can tell right away <laughs> Balance staff is broken. It's very much broken. Uh, the hairspring is pretty messed up. We're missing a bunch of screws. You can see we're missing one uh, around that jewel setting there. This screw is certainly wrong. This screw looks wrong size to me. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of uh, rust on the uh, ratchet wheel and the crown wheel here. Uh, so this watch is an absolute basket case. Uh, a bunch of the wheels are actually not, the pivots are not set in the jewels here. It's complete. Um, I can actually see all the wheels there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, the watch looks to be complete, but uh, certainly has uh, has just extensive damage, and it's going to take me quite a long time to work through this. In particular, one thing I want to try on this watch is uh, screw making if I can't find screws uh, that will fit the watch. So all of that's to come. Please stick around. Uh, right now, I'm just going to do the disassembly. And as usual, you know, it's totally unscripted. I will... Uh, try to say useful things as they come to me, no promises, uh, but in any case, I hope you enjoy the restoration of this 72 uh, Waltham Hunter Pocket Watch. Okay, I'm going to start by removing the hands, or at least what remains of them, uh, from the dial. So I'll start with this uh, seconds hand here. Uh, this wheel is not set in the movement properly, so it's at a bit of a weird angle. So this one, hopefully, I can just pull right off with my uh, sensible hand remover here. Remember, as I said before, I don't lever against the dial, even with this tool. I just clamp it on and lift straight off. Uh, the hour and minute hands are both gone, uh, but the ring, the base of the hands remains. And so I think there's a good chance I'm going to have to hit it with a little oh, penetrating oil here just to get those off. Often they're really, really stuck on, rusted on. And it's hard to get those off the um, the hour wheel and the cannon pinion. So, of course, the movement's going to get cleaned. It's an absolute basket case. No harm in putting a little dab of oil on now, uh, just so I don't uh, <laughs> break myself or the watch trying to get those hands off. So uh, I'm going to start with the uh, seconds hand now. And as usual, I use a little polyurethane uh, bag here just to protect the dial. So I just get under the hand, then I just clamp the two um, the two arms together and lift straight up. Okay, so that hand is easy enough. It's pretty bent, pretty messed up. So I can put that little seconds hand off to the side here. Now I'm going to start with the um, with the hour and minute hands here. I think I'm just going to go right ahead and put a little a little a tiny dab of coil just on the pinion there. Can opinion. Give it a second to soak in here. Of course, it's going on the dial, but dial is enamel, should be okay. I'll wipe it off once we get the dial off there.
exerting quite a bit of pull now. I want to pull them straight up. I would rather not leave her against the dial. Uh, maybe I can just do the minute hand here. Nope, there's one. At least one. Oh, that's both of them. Very good. So actually, it looks like we don't have the minute, the base of the minute hand here. We just have the hour hand. That came off fairly easily, so that's great. So I'm going to put the remnants of these in the parts tray. Who knows whether the seconds hand will be reusable. I think maybe it is. But certainly I'm going to have to source new hour and minute hands. So um, that's this poly bag used. Ah, <laughs> there's the minute hand uh, ring there. Okay. So this is, thing is used. It's now soiled. This thing is getting chucked. And I can put my little hand tool away. Just going to put it in Monaco to get some the oil off. Okay, hand tool away. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and remove the dial. Uh, so there are dial feed screws. Incidentally, you can see this movement is lever set. It's a, it's a high grade movement for its time. A uh, highly jeweled movement. Um, a cannon pinion has just fallen out the bottom of it. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a little unexpected <laughs> considering I still have the dial on. Okay, interesting, interesting find. Uh, so I'm going to put that away. It's weird. Okay, but you know, this watch has probably been stored in a box or a drawer full of parts for many a year. So, you know, okay, so it's carrying some parts with it. That's a bonus. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen the dial feed screws here. I see one, two, three. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do that now. You can't see it, but I am using a small, uh, just a kind of weak loop for this. I want to make sure our screwdriver fits. There's no extra space between the screwdriver and the wall of the slot. It's very loose in any case. It's a challenge, right? You want to fit the screwdriver properly. That fits properly, but you do not want a screwdriver that's so long that it will hit the sides of the uh, plate while you're unscrewing. Okay, that seems fine. Okay. So now the dial should be loose. Let's see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and, okay, first bad sign. Um, the uh, seconds ring, which would originally have been soldered to the dial, uh, has come completely loose. Okay, so that's uh, that's gonna be a big challenge. I don't know how I'm gonna deal with that. I've never tried to do any sort of dial repair on these before. Uh, okay, all right, all right. I, you know, I picked this watch, not just because it's a semi-rare watch as far as American watches go, but because it's got everything. Everything needs to be done. So, you know, you always learn more when you bite off big projects, even if they are too big for you. So, um, let's put this dial in the parts tray for now. Actually, off on my bench. God knows what I'm going to do with that. We'll see. We'll see. Now, you'll note, of course, I'm touching the movement with my bare hands. Um, this is no big deal, right? Because the movement is going to get cleaned. Of course, when you're putting together a clean movement, you want finger cots on, right? You want to avoid direct finger contact as much as humanly possible because uh, you don't want to leave your fingerprints on it. But uh, this thing is pretty gross, pretty bad. So um, right now it's okay. Okay, the second cannon pinion, which I'm going to place separately from the one that fell out of the movement. Okay, so... Um, what, are, what I'm going to start with is removing the ratchet wheel, if I possibly can. Now, I know there's no power in this watch. The gear train is totally, totally loose. Uh, indeed, as I said before, a bunch of the wheels are not even located properly. So, what the hell? There's no, there's no spring that's going to suddenly blast, <laughs> blast open on us or blast unwound. So, again, you know, we want our screwdriver to fit securely. 
and I think there's a good possibility I may have to bust out the penetrating well at some point here. This one is okay. I think this is the incorrect screw. Ah, uh, okay. So a little, uh, little ring here, which I can lift off the Rodico. So there's going to be some polishing, refinishing required on these uh, wheels. See if I can lift up this ratchet wheel. Come on. Ratchet wheel does not want to lift off. Okay, let's do the crown wheel. Here, still wide. So here I don't have a screwdriver that fits, so I'm going to have to go uh, to my Arkansas stone and just try to blunt the tip of my screwdriver so that it fits uh, easily in the uh, screw slot. So it completely fills the screw slot. Now, uh, I am going to refinish the screws on this movement, but, you know, it's the right practice to, to get into. So here I'm just keeping my screwdriver as flat as possible, trying to take the sharp edge off the screwdriver. that it's going to fill that screw slot. Okay, so some considerable time later, I'm back with a well-fitting screwdriver, but I just tried to turn this screw and I couldn't get it. So again, I'm going to put a little penetrating oil on it and move on somewhere where I can make forward progress. So I think we'll next we'll try to take out the balance. So again, just a little oil on the finger. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. That's soak for a while. Meanwhile, let's see if we can get the balance out. My screwdriver is okay. Right, so again, we want a good fit here, and it's not a bad idea to just check this with the loop. Get in with the loop while you're doing it. Check the fit of your screwdriver. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, that's tight. Okay. Now, there's no slot here for, um, you know, sharpened peg wood or a screwdriver if you if you feel you must uh, so I think the thing to do here with the balance cock is to try to get in up and behind the balance wheel and just sort of wiggle it off so I'm gonna try that being careful not to actually touch the wheel I mean if you touch the wheel in this case it's no big deal because the staff is broken but okay so there we go there's the sad old balance coming out. Totally broken, totally broken down. We're gonna have to see about, um, we're gonna have to see about the state of the jewel. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the pallets. One uh, comment, when I saw this movement online, I was convinced, oh, it has the wrong uh, pallet bridge, but actually I looked at a bunch of pictures of this uh, movement. Uh, I thought, oh, they were swapped out the um, pallet bridge from a gilt or a gilded movement, not a, um, not a, uh, not a, um, pardon me, <laughs> not a nickel plated movement. Uh, but actually I looked at a bunch of examples of this movement and they all had this, um, this kind of gilt pallet bridge. So that's, uh, that's kind of an interesting, that's kind of an interesting feature. So this is a time, this watch is 1877, built in 1877, but it's a 72 Waltham. So this was in time when, um, I think it was the 1860s that Waltham started to introduce nickel plating, uh, which was pioneered, I believe in Switzerland. So, um, you know, still kind of a transitional period. Maybe they didn't have the plating down on all their, uh, all their parts. Just an interesting thing to, to note there. So we're again missing a screw here. The other screw won't fit. Uh, it's a little close to the edge for my 
my fun part. Okay, that cooperates. Always best to just lift off if you can. Yeah, so very interesting. This gilt uh, palette bridge, jeweled. It's nice. It's attractive, and it's engraved. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it's engraved with a nice pattern there. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, so there is the palette fork. Um, so interestingly, uh, this watch does have banking pins, you can see here, but there's also a banking action built into this, um, this crescent, which, which uh, straddles the escape wheel arbor, right? So there's a kind of safety uh, action in, built into the pallet fork itself. Uh, and uh, we have a vertical uh, guard pin now. So, Yep, classic single roller pallet fork. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna try again. I've gotta move back to uh, the ratchet wheel. Uh, nope, nope. Uh, this might be a time for the old fingernails. No, I just cannot get it, so. Uh, maybe we're going to try the crown wheel screw again. So I've got to use quite a bit of downward pressure here. Oh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So here we go. So this was what I was wondering about. You know, modern movements, these are reverse threaded. This one's not reverse threaded, right? So if you definitely can't go one way, try the other way, just gently and see if you can uh, see if you can do it. I couldn't move it either way before, but now that I've got the penetrating oil on there, I can't actually uh, screw it out counterclockwise. So interesting. Ring. Boop. One thing that I think is kind of interesting is uh, I can't see any, I see, I guess, the sort of ring brush ring pattern on the wheels. I would have expected something a little more elaborate. Um, in general, this movement is, I see some striping, but it's not heavily um, damascene, which is kind of interesting because they were already doing this. Uh, they were already doing elaborate damaskeening by the 1870s. I have seen it on other examples of this grade. Um, but this watch is comparatively modest, and I'm not sure why that is. I would have to go look at, you know, some of the other watches in this run from this time and see if that's the case there, but I, I'm not sure. Not sure why that is. <laughs> These wheels are well and truly stuck on. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause and think about this for a moment. Okay, I've sat, I've thought about this. Uh, here's the solution I've come up with. Penetrating oil between the uh, ratchet wheel and barrel arbor, also here on the crown wheel. Um, but even with the oil, can't get them off. Not, not, um, not in any kind of delicate way. You know, I guess you could get a um, screwdriver under there, but that's really just bad practice, right? You're going to inevitably mar a plate. So I think maybe the best thing to do is take the whole, uh, take the three quarter plate off, whatever is underneath. So the barrel, for example, uh, and whatever's underneath this uh, crown wheel, I guess the winding pinion, it's on this square here is going to come with it, right? And then hopefully that's a bigger component that I can just pull out of these two wheels. So I'm kind of uh, bridging them off, which uh, is probably not, it's not ideal, but I don't think it's that bad in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, pillar screws and lift the whole bridge off. Four, so four I believe to be incorrect. I'm making a mental note to myself as recorded in this video that this incorrect screw is in this screw hole here. Because of course, if the screw is incorrect, it may have messed up the tab. And then it would be important to put that screw back 
in the same place you found it. I think I'm going to try to make a new screw here, but you never know, so best to make the mental note. Oh, fuck, fuck, that's tough. There we go. Okay. So, um, there's a couple interesting things here. Of course, I have lifted components off uh, the barrel in particular. So, let's see if we can get this thing off. Ooh, there's some big old marks on these plates. Gently. Man, that arbor is really stuck. Really stuck. Okay. Oh, bingo. Okay, so there's our barrel. Little dab will do ya. Let's do that. And uh, we'll see if I can come back to this plate later on without the video and uh, get into it. 870, 870. So again, numbers matching. So that's nice. So there's our base plate with the train. Uh, so I can see already an interesting kind of click mechanism here. There's a ratchet wheel here and you can see the click is underneath the barrel, which is quite interesting. I've never seen that before. But then again, I've never worked on a watch. Maybe this is the oldest watch I've worked on. Never, never a Waltham this old anyway, so. Center wheel, third wheel. Missing a pivot, that's nice. Fourth wheel, missing a pivot, that's nice. Escape wheel, uh, both pivots intact. Okay, so we got two broken pivots there. That's nice. Uh, okay, so I'll put the train away. Okay, so now we're gonna do the winding and setting mechanism. This watch is cool, I mean, it really, it has a, um, uh, so it's, it's uh, this one is a kind of early watch that is uh, stem wind and stem set. So it has, um, I mean, it's lever set, but it's not key set is my point. So there's a lever that's engaging setting mode, lever back. Ah, really a very simple and kind of ingenious design, I have to say. So lever out, uh, pushes the yoke, yoke pushes the uh, pinion over. So it's actually quite modern in that way. Ah, very cool, very cool. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there's our stem assembly. So here is a little gear that's held on by that little spring, which engages uh, winding mode. There is our sliding clutch. Uh, there is our winding pinion. And there's our stem. Cool, very cool. Okay guys, so here's my little wrap up of part one of this video. So I uh, managed to get the crown wheel off, no big deal. Mainspring out, the one thing on this watch that isn't totally broken. So uh, <laughs> from what I can see, we got a couple smashed jewels, we got a couple broken pivots, we got a broken dial, we got a broken balance staff, uh, we got some rust, we need some parts that need refinishing. Uh, inch, we got a bunch of screws missing. Um, so in short, this watch is a complete and total basket case. Um, and I may have been a complete fool for undertaking it, but you know what? I just had a soft spot for this watch from the moment I saw it. Got it real cheap, so, um, you know, what the hell? It'll be a fun project. I'll learn a bunch of stuff. Uh, learn about dial repair. Learn about, uh, <laughs> learn about, uh, more about jewel replacement, repivoting. Can't wait. So, um, the biggest hurdle, maybe the biggest hurdle, all this stuff can be dealt with, right? The, maybe the biggest hurdle is finding a case for this watch. So, uh, in particular, cause the stem's a little weird. Um, I read somewhere that, um, someone told me on Instagram that this is not actually a true 16 size. So it has a particular case for the 72 Waltham. So 
that might be hard. So there may be some kind of um, desk clock in, in future for this watch if I can't find a case. We're going to have to see. Uh, but in any case, don't expect anything soon. But hopefully in a couple weeks, I can come back around and do a summary of everything that is wrong with this watch. And then, uh, you know, uh, I did a lot of videos for the Bun special in which I covered a bunch of topics that I'm not going to cover again, like uh, burnishing, right? Uh, I've covered in another video uh, making of a uh, setting for a friction jewel, right? To look like it's a brass, but, uh, you know, brass setting for a rubbing jewel. So obviously those things I'm not going to cover again, but staff replacement, poisoning, blah, blah, blah. Um, but uh, the parts that are interesting of this, the parts that are something new, uh, repairing this dial, if I can do this, um, I'm going to have to ream out some, I can see someone's just done an absolute piss poor replacement of a jewel there. Uh, so I'm going to have to ream that out maybe in the lathe. So maybe I'll cover how to do that. And, um, repivoting, I'm going to try to do that. Balance staff. I think I can probably find one for this model, but if not, I'm going to have to learn how to cut a balance staff. That's something I've been meaning to do for a long time. So the interesting stuff, the interesting stuff I'll bring to you um, so that's it. I'm signing off for the night. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I may be a fool, but at least, uh, at least I'll be an interested fool. Okay. Good night.